This is a devotional for Sunday, August the 21st, 2022, from heartofashepherd.com. The title of the devotional is The Passion and Peril of a Faithful Witness. Now, our scripture reading, John chapter 7 and John chapter 8. Now, the devotional itself, though, will be taken from John chapter 7. Now, today's scripture reading brings us to a pivotal moment in the life and ministry of Jesus. John 7 and John 8 reveal a change in Christ's relationship with the religious rulers or leaders of his day. From here on, he withdraws from Judea, uh, southern Israel that included the city of Jerusalem, and retreated to his beloved Galilee in the northern area of Israel around the Sea of Galilee. Now, the reason for his decision was, we read in John 7 and verse 1, that the Jews sought to kill him. Well, and according to verse 6, he was mindful, and I quote, his time was not yet come. Well, knowing that the Lord's appointment with the cross would fall six months later on the Passover, Jesus took care not to fall prematurely into the hands of his enemy. Now notice with me, and I invite you to open your Bible, John chapter 7, verses 2 through 9, what I'm describing as the disbelief of Jesus' brethren. Now, we read that the time was in the fall of the year uh, to Jesus' final Passover. And verse 2 reveals that the Jews' Feast of the Tabernacles was at hand. Well, the Feast of the Tabernacles was one of three feasts the Lord set aside for his people to celebrate annually. And it was a commemoration of Israel's wandering in the wilderness. Now notice with me, as you look at John 7 and verse 2, where we have Jesus's, and it says brethren, literally these are his half-brothers, the sons of Joseph and Mary, Christ himself being the Son of God, the virgin-born Son of Mary. Well, these brethren, these half-brothers, if you would, urged the Lord to go up to the Feast of Tabernacles, They challenged him, saying in verse 4, There is no man that does anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. And so you can draw your conclusion regarding the half-brother's motivation, but the Apostle John later reflected in verse 5 of John 7, For neither did his brethren believe in, in him. And so the actions of his brethren were the actions of unbelievers. Well, Jesus refused his brother's invitation, and he said, John chapter 7 and verse 7 and 8, Go ye up to this feast, the feast of the tabernacle. And then he goes on and says, And I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. Now, be assured of this. Jesus would obey the commandments, but not on his brother's timetable. Christ's timetable was in his father's hands. Now, notice then John 7 and verses 8 through 13, an inquiry by Jesus' enemies and friends. Now, after exhorting his unbelieving brethren to go up to Jerusalem without him, Jesus followed soon after, according to verse 10, but not openly, that is, as it were, in secret. Now, the Jews, in this case, meaning the religious rulers and leaders, were awaiting Jesus' attendance at the Feast of the Tabernacles, and not seeing him, they began to question, where is he? Well, the people anticipating Jesus would be at the feast began to fall into a contentious debate among themselves, saying of Jesus in verse 12, he is a good man, that is, meaning he's loving, caring, compassionate, and yet others would say, nay, But he deceiveth, he leads astray the people, leading them astray from doctrine, if you would. Well, in verse 13, there were many, however, who believed Jesus was the Christ, but for fear of spies, they dare not speak openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now, notice then in John 7 and verse 14 and 15, what I am describing as an unexpected appearance. When Jesus followed his brethren, but covertly to Jerusalem, his enemies were unprepared. When he suddenly appeared in the temple, according to verse 14, and he began to teach. Well, the Jewish leaders uh, had contempt for the Lord. 
know any lacked a formal rabbinic education and were stunned by his insight and understanding of the scriptures. They marveled according to verse 15, saying, How knoweth this man's letters? That is, how does he have an understanding of the law and the commandments? Having never learned, having not received a formal academic education and the credentials. Well, notice then in verse 16 through 18, a stunning revelation. While Jesus lacked the formal training of the rabbinical schools, it surely did not mean he was ignorant or unlearned. Neither was his doctrine of his own invention. Jesus declared in verse 16, my doctrine, my teacher, my instruction is not mine, but it is his God the Father that sent me. Now, a closing thought for this study today, and I suggest that we derive two principles from Jesus' response to his enemies. The first is you look at verse 17. A humble, teachable spirit was essential for knowing and understanding the word and the will of God. In verse 17, the Lord taught the people, if any man will do his will, the will of God, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Put it in a different way. God gives wisdom and understanding to those who will to do his will. Now, a second truth is revealed in verse 18, and it is that one can judge a man's heart and motive by whose glory he seeks. John 7 and verse 18, the Lord said, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that speaketh or seeketh his glory that sent him, the glory of the Father, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. I close with this. False teachers are glory seekers. They are interested in self-promotion. They seek to advance themselves even at the sacrifice of others. They seek glory for themselves and not that of God. And that leaves us with a closing question. Whose glory are you seeking? I hope that you've enjoyed today's devotional. I invite you to subscribe either on YouTube or subscribe to the written devotional that is always found at heartofashepherd.com. Thank you. God bless.